Okay, so welcome to this next video uh, on uh, the mitochondria and calcium signaling. So in this next video, what we're going to see is what the effect of a calcium puff on uh, the mitochondria is going to be. So briefly, what we will do is we will uh, go over um, uh, the structure of mitochondria just for a revision and we'll look at the way in which calcium uh, levels within the matrix of the mitochondria can change. Okay, so, uh, basically, the structure of a mitochondria then, so basically, uh, a mitochondria has two membranes. It has an outer membrane, which I'll draw here, like so. So this is an outer membrane, and then it has an inner membrane. And I just want to uh, make something very, very clear. The, uh, these are two separate uh, phospholipid bilayers. The outer membrane is a phospholipid bilayer. The inner membrane is an out, uh, a phospholipid bilayer. It is not, uh, re I repeat, it is not, because I've seen this misunderstanding before, it is not that the two layers of phospholipids have got separated and there is a big space in between them. So it is not this. You don't have a single layer of phospholipids as the outer membrane and then another the opposite layer as the inner membrane. That is not the way it works. It's not that you've just pushed a space in between the two uh, leaflets of a phospholipid by there. No. The outer membrane is a phospholipid by there, so it has an outer leaflet and an inner leaflet, and the inner membrane is a phospholipid by there, so it has an outer leaflet and an inner leaflet, like so. So the uh, space between them um, is not a space between two um, single monolayers of um, phospholipids. Instead, you have two phospholipid bilayers and you've got a space in between them. So that's just something that uh, I think is important to clarify. Okay, so the space between the inner membrane of the mitochondria and the outer membrane of the mitochondria is known as the intermembrane space. Okay, so this is the inner membrane that I'm labeling here, and then I'll, um, then I'll label the um, intermembrane space. So this space in between this outer membrane and this inner membrane is known as the intermembrane space. Okay, and it's very, very important in the electron transport train chain, as I'll um, <laughs> talk about in a moment. So this is the intermembrane space. Now, the, um, the, um, the whole, uh, well, the cavity contained by the inner membrane is known as the matrix of the mitochondria. So this is the mitochondrial matrix. And as you can see, there are invaginations of the inner membrane of the mitochondria into the matrix of the mitochondria. And these sort of invaginations of the inner membrane are in order to increase the surface area of this inner membrane within the matrix. And these invaginations are known as mitochondrial cristae, or the singular is a crista. Uh, so the plural is then cristae, basically. So these are cristae, mitochondrial cristae. Right, okay, and the purpose of these um, mitochondrial cristae uh, is to increase the surface area of the inner membrane uh, with the uh, mitochondrial matrix because in the inner membrane of the mitochondria there are the proteins associated with the electron transport chain, so complex 1, complex 2, complex 3, complex 4, etc. And what these, um, what these uh, proteins are doing is uh, they are moving protons from the matrix into um, the intermembrane space. So um, electrons are transferred between these complexes, and as they do, they go down uh, in, in their energy state. And the energy that those electrons give up is used uh, to pump protons, protons uh, or hydrogen nuclei from uh, the matrix of the mitochondria into the intermembrane space. So what happens is as this happens, you uh, gradually uh, build up a positive electrical potential in the intermembrane space because you are moving positively charged protons into the intermembrane space and you gradually build up a negative electrical potential in the mitochondrial matrix because you are moving protons from the mitochondrial matrix. So basically what happens is the electrical potential in the matrix goes down, becomes negative, and the electrical potential in the intermembrane space becomes positive, it goes up. So if we look at the electrical potential difference 
so which I'll call the voltage, from the intermembrane space. And how shall I denote that? Um, um, I'll, I'll just put numbers. So I'll call the intermembrane space 1, and I'll call the matrix 2. So if we look at the voltage from 1 to 2, by which I mean if you had a little man uh, sitting in the intermembrane space who was measuring electrical potential, he'd get a certain number. Then he goes into compartment 2, the mitochondrial matrix, and he again measures the electrical potential in compartment 2, and he's going to ask how much different is the electrical potential in compartment 2 from the electrical potential in compartment 1. So basically what he would have to do is take the electrical potential in compartment 2 and subtract off what the electrical potential in compartment 1 is. That's what I mean by the electrical potential difference across this uh, inner membrane of the mitochondria. Well basically it's quite large. It's found to be a negative 160 millivolts, which if you compare that to the electrical potential difference across the cell membrane, which is usually around negative 65 millivolts, that's big. So, what this tells us is that uh, compartment 2, or the mitochondrial matrix, its electrical potential is 160 millivolts lower than the electrical potential of compartment 1. Okay, uh, and that is due to the movement of protons from uh, the matrix into the intermembrane space. Um, all right, okay, so um, what, what, just a little bit of a revision that um, what are these, what's this movement of protons doing? What's this gradient of protons doing? Well, basically, you have another protein that is in the uh, inner mitochondrial membrane which is called the ATP synthase, which allows, basically, protons to move back from the intermembrane space into the mitochondrial matrix, down the electrochemical gradient, and it uses the energy that's released by those protons moving down the electrochemical gradient to, um, basically, take ADP and inorganic phosphate and fuse it together to make ATP. So this is the ATP synthase. All right, so... Um, that is, the, um, that is a little bit of a review of the mitochondria and their function within a cell. Right, so, uh, another important thing that I just need to tell you is that this inner mitochondrial membrane is extremely tight. There's not, it's not freely permeable at all, and it has to not be freely permeable to stop protons from moving from the intermembrane space to the matrix, back into the matrix, basically. So it's a very, very tight membrane, so I'll put tight, not very permeable, whereas the outer mitochondrial membrane is highly permeable. It's not very tight at all. Um, Things can get uh, from the cytosol into the intermembrane space, and they can go from the intermembrane space into the cytosol. And you might wonder, well, if, you, if this membrane is freely permeable, then why aren't these protons that you are pumping out uh, into, from the matrix into the intermembrane space, why aren't they going out the outer membrane and diffusing off into the cytoplasm? Well, the reason for that, <laughs> all I need to point to really, is this negative 160 millivolts. The mitochondrial matrix is at an electrical potential 160 millivolts lower than the intermembrane space. Okay, these protons have a positive charge. They want to go to places where the electrical potential is lower. So they are feeling a very strong electrical driving force uh, towards the mitochondrial matrix. That is why they stay clutched, basically, to the outer surface of this uh, inner membrane of the mitochondria. They are trying their hardest to get back into the matrix because they want to be in that area of lower electrical potential, basically. So they're held in the intermembrane space by the electrical potential, and that's why they don't just diffuse off. Now, we need to discuss why, what are mitochondria to do with calcium? Uh, what is the effect of releasing calcium from the, uh, from the endoplasmic reticulum going to have on the mitochondria? but we'll do that in the next video.